For the last piece of section 7.1, we want to explain how to interpret the area under a normal curve. There's really two main interpretations. You can think of it as the proportion of the entire population with the characteristics that was described by the interval values, or you can think of it as the probability that a randomly selected individual from the population will have that characteristic described by the interval values. It's just a little bit uh, different in your way of thinking about it and interpreting it. It's not going to change the probability or anything. All right, let's look at this example and it'll probably become a little bit clearer. <laughs> so we have a um, population of giraffes and they weigh, um, or excuse me, their giraffe weights are normally distributed. So what they weigh is following a normal distribution. It has the mean of 2,200 pounds and a standard deviation of 200 pounds. Okay, so we're going to label the normal curve. So let's see here. If we're going to remind ourselves of all the things we've learned, the center is 2200. The inflection points happen just a little bit above halfway. So if you think of, you know, halfway would be right there. We go a little bit above it and put your point and then match that point on the other side. You're eyeballing it, but you don't want it to be too skinny or too fat, and you want them to be exactly the same height and exactly the same distance from that mean. That point right there will be one standard deviation away, right there. All right, and then, well, we could label that point because we know it's one standard deviation away, and a standard deviation was 200 pounds. So if we take 2200 plus 200, we would get 2400 right here. If we take 2200 minus 200, we would get 2000. And if you're thinking, that looks familiar, we've done this before. Yes, we did this before in chapter three. This is a little review of section 3.2 when we learned the empirical rule. So if you look up the empirical rule in section 3.2, you'll see the same stuff. This will kind of be the last time we do it. We'll keep working with the normal curve, but we won't get this into it. All right, so then we'll, we'll get more into it actually in a different way though. All right, so there's that, that distance, then that has to match this distance right here. And of course, if you have a ruler, you can try to make it match up. You know, say if this was two centimeters there, then try to make the next one two centimeters and so on. Although this was actually more like a centimeter and a half. All right, then wherever that point is, that would have to match over here and that would get you your distance right here. Right. And that distance right there should be the same as that distance right there should be the same as that distance right there and so on. And you can just kind of eyeball it or measure it with a ruler for your last ones. Remember the curve actually keeps going. I mean you could put little arrows on the side of it because it goes forever and ever and ever. Now these numbers would be 2600 and 2800. I'm just adding 200 on. And then this one would be 1800 and this would be 1600. So I've added in three standard deviations, but it keeps going and going and going, at least as far as we are concerned um, for the normal curve. But the center is at 2200, and the most important placement, besides the center of course, is these inflection points, because they tell you where the first standard deviation falls, and then that distance has to be consistent throughout the entire graph, left and right, that same distance every time to get to the next number. All right, that's all well and good. Now I don't need the vertical lines and stuff like that that we had from before. But what I do need is I wanna shade the region that represents giraffes that weigh 2,100 pounds or less, right? So less than 2,100 pounds. So I guess I'll do that in green. Why not? All right, so here's 2,000, here's 2,200. 2,100 is exactly halfway between the two. So I'm gonna kinda of use my ruler here and draw a vertical line here at 2,100 pounds. If I want less than 2100, I'm actually going to shade to the left. Right? Try not to cross the lines. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so this would be less than 2100 pounds. So right here at this vertical line mark should be at 2100. Right there. That's 2100 pounds. And so then, and if I wanted to, I could go over that in that dark ink just so you can see it more clearly there you go so there's 2100 pounds and shade to the left try not to cross over like i did there all right now suppose that that area is 0 0.3085 so we just magically know that it's 0 0.3085 we have no idea why but that was just given to us so for for the time being this is by magic 
But if you think, hey, how am I going to find that number? That's what section 7.2 will teach us how. Right? For right now, you don't know where it comes from. But we'll learn how to do it in 7.2. It will involve a calculator. Because again, in case you missed it, that's calculus to be able to find an area that's curved like that. We would need calculus if we were going to do it by hand. And we are not going to require calculus. Therefore, we are going to use it um, stack crunch or our calculator. They both have them programmed in there. All right, but what we're interested in right now is the two interpretations piece. There's two possible interpretations of that same area. So let's read back. It says the proportion of the entire population. So let's think about that. Let me write proportion. So there's a proportion way to explain this, which is turning this 0 0.3085 into a percent. So you would say 30.85% of all giraffes, right? It's a proportion of the population way less than 2,100 pounds, right? It's a percentage of the whole. As a matter of fact, we could label that. That's what this one is. This is saying a percent of the whole population. So in our case, it's 30.85% of all giraffes, right, percentage of the whole, weigh less than 2,100 pounds. Now the other way to interpret it is the probability way. And that's saying if you select, if we select, if you select a single random giraffe, the chances it weighs less than 2,100 pounds is 0 0.3085, right? It's talking about a single random giraffe, right? Rather than the percentage of the whole now, if you're thinking, well, they're kind of the same thing. Yes, exactly. There are two interpretations of the same number. They, they're slightly different ways of thinking about it, though. One's talking about the proportion. One's talking about the percentage of the whole group. And the probability one's talking about a single giraffe, a, a single random giraffe. So it's thinking about one rather than the whole. Now, what percentage of, gra of giraffes, excuse me, what proportion of gir giraffes, giraffes weigh more than 2,100 pounds? All right, well, let's see here. If you have 0 0.3085 over here, then you're going to have 1 minus 0 0.3085 because, oops, eight five, because you're talking about more than, that's the complement, right? It's the complement of less than, which is 0.6915. Of course, I can show that to you if you need to see it. 1 minus 0 0.3085 is, in fact, 0.6915. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wait a second, wait a second. If more than is the complement of less than, what about equal to? What about equal to 2,100 pounds, which is this question right here? Ah, but it's a trick question because the probability that it weighs exactly 2,100 pounds would be 0. The probability of an exact value in a continuous distribution is zero. And that's why less than and more than are complements of each other, because the equal to part makes no difference in a continuous distribution. That's not true in chapters five and six, but it is in chapter seven when the distributions are continuous.